Welcome, good people. We're going to be talking about Section 8.6, which is our unit on probability. And there's very little that we don't know that we need to know about probability moving into here because most of what probability is is just counting. And I'll leave, you, you can come back and refer to these. We're going to kind of talk about these along the way. But basically, probability after everything they go through here, if we can think in terms of winning and losing, then the probability that an event occurs is the number of ways to win, careful, not divided by the number of ways to lose, that's actually odds, but divided by the number of possible outcomes. And that might be the better way to look at it than trying to memorize all of this. Um, we have some things we may come back and take a look at here um, regarding this would be like an or problem, like we, we could win we could win today um, if I flip a coin and it lands on heads, or I roll a die and it lands on and it turns up five or six. In which case, we, it would be the probability of the coin event plus the probability of the die event. And this would be minus the probability any intersection, which I'm going to refer to right now as. This is all about the queen of clubs, and you'll see what I'm talk, talking about a little bit later in here. And here's good news. The probability that two, two events occur, take my coin and my flip a coin, roll a die, and I need to win, and let's say if I get heads and a five or six, is the probability of heads times the probability of a five or a six. Um, provided that one event doesn't affect the other event. And obviously in the coin and the die, flipping heads is not going to have any bearing on what the die rolls. So let's go ahead and get started. A six-sided die is rolled twice, and the results of one roll, of roll one and roll two are recorded. We're just looking for the sample space. This is the number of possibilities, which is basically what our denominator becomes, is just the number of events in the sample space. Uh, so results of roll one and roll two are recorded. Well, we could roll a one and a two. Let me start that over. We could roll a one and a one, or a one and a two, or a one and a three, or a one and a four, or a one and a five, or a one and a six. Now we could roll a two and then a one. So yeah, we'd say, well, that's kind of the same rule. Well. We're, we're, they're, they're specifically referring to roll one and roll two are recorded, so this would be a different recording, roll one, roll two. So it's two, two and a two, two and a three, two and a four, two and a five, two and a six, three and a one, three and a two, and I'm going to just dot, dot, dot that down to where we get to six and a one, six and a two, dot, 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 until we get to a six and a six. And the important thing for probability's sake is to recognize, hey, we have 36 things that can happen when we roll two dice. Okay. Two country supervisors are selected from five supervisors, A, B, C, D, E, to study a recycling plan. Now, careful, we're supposed to list the sample space. The selection of A, B, and B, A based on the wording here Two county supervisors are selected from five to study a recycling plan. It's not like one's re one studying one way. It's not like we have a, a supervisor, county supervisor one and a county supervisor two. So it would that would be the same result. In other words, the ordering is not going to matter here. So it's A, B, A, and C, A, and D, A, and E. That's all the groups that can contain A. So B and C, B and D, B and E, but I wouldn't include B and A. C and D, C and E, sorry, and then just plain old E. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten ways, but they're really just talking about that sample space, that list of items, including A, B, of course. And now we're going to find the probability. I know this isn't your first go round talking about probability. Um, in fact, it's one of the more real life things that events that we that we tend to discuss is probabilities. What's the chance it's going to rain today? What's the probability it's going to rain today? Seventy percent. Find the probability for the 
experiment of selecting one card at random from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. The card is black. Well, there are 13 spades and 13 hearts and 13 diamonds and 13 clubs. So we win if we draw a spade or, which implies plus, we win if we draw a club, 13. But what could really happen, both of these would be on 52, so common denominator, 52. Or 26 on 52, one half. And the card is numbered 2 through 10. Well, how many cards are numbered 2 through 10? There's four suits worth of 2 through 10s. From 2 to 10 is nine different entries. Eight steps from 2 to 10, but nine cards. There's nine cards that are numbered 2 to 10 in each suit times four suits, 36. Now, the probability, though, is the number of ways we'd win. We'd win 36 out of the total possible things that can happen. 52, okay, that is 36. It's certainly not one half. If I reduce by 4, I get 9 on 13. And if we think about that for a moment, well, that, that makes sense because, you know, what's the probability if we were just drawing from diamonds? that we get a 2 through 10, 9 and 13. Probability is 9 and 13 for all the suits. Okay. Use the sample space from exercise 10 to find the probability. Of, so that's like this sample space here that we're, that we're using. And find the probability for the experiment of tossing a six-sided die twice. And they're talking about the sum of them. I'm going to make a different chart for this and talk about this just a little bit where first die could be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Second die could be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now I'm going to do the sums of the dies. And you can time me on this, and I've probably taken 15 seconds so far, but this does not take long to build, but you might not have to build it. So here's the sums. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1 and 2, 3. 2 and 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 4 and 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. There's all the things that can happen. Definitely worth noting this. There are six ways we can get, if you're looking down that diagonal, a 7. That's the most likely. And each step away from 7 reduces by 1. It's also simple to understand, but worth noting, there's one way we can get a 12, and that's to get a 6 and a 6. And there's only one way we can get a 2. So I keep that in mind when I'm thinking, what's the probability of, get, of rolling two dice and getting a 3? Well, it's one step away from 2. There's two ways we can do it. Or what's the probability of rolling a 6? Well, it's one step away from 7s, and 7's 6 out of, so that's 5. 5 ways for 6, 5 out of 36. Okay, so you can refer back up to that. You might not need to. Use the sample space from 10. So I'm really going to use this to find the probability for the experiment. Sum of at least 8. So the probability is we got 36 things that are going to happen. The denominator is a breeze. How many of those are at least 8? And we say, well, that's 5 and 4 and 3 and 2 and 1, or 9, 12, 13, 14, 15 out of 36, reduced by 3, 5 twelfths. What about odd or prime? Well, that means we could roll a 1, but we really can't roll a 1. We could roll a 2, that's possible. We could roll a 3, we could roll a 5, we could roll a 7. We can't roll an 8 or a 9 or a 10, but we could roll an 11. How many ways can we roll a 2? 1. How many ways can we roll a 3? That's one step away from 2. So that would be one more than 5. Two more steps from 3. It's more likely by two steps. That gets me to 4. And you can check it. 1, 2, 3, 4. 7. I'm committed to memorizing. That's 6. And this is one step shy of 12. There's one way to roll a 12. So there's two ways to roll an 11. 
all on what how many things really can happen 36 so what do we get here 3 13 15 15 out of 36 or 5 twelfths okay all right this actually I mean yeah hold it out looks like a, more of a story problem but this actually uh, probably makes things a little bit simpler one of the team's 2200 season ticket holders is selected at random we got 2200 total they're pretty much telling us that's probably a denominator is selected to win a prize. The circle graph shows the ages of the season ticket holders. Find the probability of the event. The winner is older than 39. Well, the winner being how many winners are older than 39, this batch, 836 plus this batch, 506, all the rest are under 39. That is over 2,200. Each of those would be over 2,200. So I don't know whether the back of the book answers um, decimals or fractions here, but I'll go 836 plus 506 divided by 2,200. And maybe worth math fractioning that, but that's going to be 61 out of 100. So it's, I'm just going to, since it worked out perfectly even, 0.61 or 61 out of 100 if you if you prefer pretty simple the winner is 19 year the winner is younger than 19 so younger than 19 would just be these 66 or plus older than 59 older than 59 would be those 506 on 2200 I'll get this one as a fraction I'm going to go ahead and just enter this one as a fraction so I get 66 plus 506 on 2200, and we get that as 13 fiftieths. Of course, that would be 0 0.26, 26 hundredths if you prefer. All right, easy enough. Number 30, and I'm going to avoid their hint, although we may come back and talk about their hint at some time during class. but. Find the probability for an experiment of drawing two marbles at random without replacement from a bag that contains one green, two yellow, three red marbles, six total marbles. And I want to think of this as they reach in and they grab a marble, they record it, so I say it's yellow, I set it aside, then I reach in and grab another marble. So both marbles are yellow. We win if both marbles are yellow. Well, what's the probability that the first marble is yellow? There's two ways I could still be in the game out of six marbles. What's the probability that the second marble then, if I take the first yellow out, set it aside, what's the probability the second one is yellow as well? There's one less yellow in there, and there's one less marble in there. And we get 2 thirtieths or 1 fifteenth. Now, the marbles are different colors. I'm going to write this one out kind of more in modified English. To win, I need two different colors. So I either, I, I could win with a green and then a yellow, or a yellow and then a green. That's a different way I could win. Or a green and then a red, or a red and then a green, or a yellow and a red or a red and a yellow and I'd invade some space. Well I could figure each one of those out just as we did with with this. For instance the first one being a green this would be one out of six, one green. Then the second one being yellow there's still two yellows left but only five marbles left. And then I'd add to that. Well what if a yellow one's first? Well there's two out of six and a green one next. There's only one green, but only five marbles. And add all of those together. But the more times we say or, the more times we should consider a back, back door on this. And uh, let, well, let, let's say, for instance, the probability that it, that it rains or snows or sleets or hails. Um, let's say the probability of all of those things occurring, you know, we add them all together and let's say it's, it's 62%. Well, what's the probability that it stays dry? 
it's 100% minus 62% or 1 minus 0.62. So I'm going to go for 1 minus the probability we lose. Well, let's see. That would be 1 minus. How could we lose? I could lose if I got a green and a green, but I can't get a green and a green. I could lose if I got a yellow and a yellow. Well, a yellow and a yellow would be 2 6, the first one's yellow, 1 5th, the second one is. Or I could lose if I got two reds. Two reds, the first one being red would be 3 6, the second one being red would be 2 fifths. So we could do that. I'm just going to be lazy with it. So we're just going to have 1 minus. 2 divided by 6 times 1 divided by 5 plus 3 divided by 6 times 2 divided by 5. And I'm going to math fraction that guy. And we end up with 11 fifteenths. Okay, so really good play here. I only had to do two of these versus six of these. It was closer to get to the answer by considering one minus the probability of losing, that equals the probability that we would win. Okay, standard deck of playing cards. Hopefully we have a familiarity with that. Um, we're going to just select one card and we win if we get a face card or a black card. So face cards, jack, queen, king, not ace. There's three in each suit. So we've got four suits times three ways we could win with a face card. That's on 52, things that could happen. Or black cards. How many black cards do we have? Well, there's 13 spades and 13 clubs, 2 times 13. Hopefully we see we have a conflict here, though. And that conflict is we got some overlap. Remember when I talked about the queen of clubs? The Queen of Clubs is listed in here and it's listed in there, as is the King and Jack of Clubs and the Jack, Queen, King of Spades are in both of these groups. They're both black cards and they're both face cards. So we have to subtract out four suits worth of three cards were counted here and here. we got to subtract that intersection back away. And that is what was discussed on that first page. Go back to... Uh, I don't have that first page here. Why don't, oh, here we go. That's right here. That's you take the probability of event A. This union. This is a union symbol. It means or. B. You add those two together, but then you have to subtract the intersection where the things happen both. This is the Queen of Clubs right here. Okay. The card is a heart or a spade. Well, that's pretty easy. There's no intersection of those two. A card is never a heart and a spade at the same time. So we have 13 hearts plus 13 spades over 52 things that can happen. Or 26 on 52, one half. Of course it's one half. Probably didn't need to do any computation to come up with that. All right, pretty easy here. Use the table, which shows the age groups of students in a college social class. Excuse me. A student from the class is randomly chosen for a project. Find the probability of the student is the given age. 22 to 30. And 22 to 30 would be just this. The probability is 2 out of, well, how many students are we dealing with? Let's see, 19, that's, that's uh, 1932 out of 32 or 1 16th. 18 to 21. Oh, okay, so that includes the 11 plus the 18 out of the 32 total, or 29 out of 32 does not reduce. Younger than 31, well, we could obviously go 11 plus 19 plus 2, but we could also go probability is 1 minus the pro how would we lose? We'd lose 1 out of 32 times. We'd just lose here. So that's 31 on 32. Would be pretty easy to come up with 31 with the number staring at us. All right, let's continue on here. 
A random number generator, now we spoke about this, a random number, number generator that selects numbers from 1 through 10 can select the same number repeatedly. It's random. It's not shuffling those numbers around. Find the probability of the event. All three numbers are a factor of 8. So our factors of 8, factors of 8 include 1, 2, 4, and 8. Those are our factors of 8 that lie from 1 to 10. So all three are supposed to be one of those. So if it, we can select out of 10, it would be 4 out of 10. And then we have to do it again. One of those 4 out of 10, 4 out of 10. Or we would get 64 out of 1,000. 64 one thousandths would be 0 0.064, tenths, hundreds, thousandths. You could reduce the fraction as well. All three numbers are greater than or equal to 9. Well, 9 or 10, that's it. 2 out of 10 times 2 out of 10 times 2 out of 10. And we get 8 out of 1,000.008. Or you could reduce the fraction. One number is 246, and the other two numbers are odd. And what we need to be cognizant of... Could both of those things happen? Could I get a number that's 2, 4, or 6 and the, and, a, and the other number to be odd? Couldn't happen. So we're okay there. If one number, so if I call this event A and this and odd would be event B. Oh, and we're selecting three, by the way. Then my, possibility, my possible ways to win is the first number could be an event A, the second number could be an event B, and the third number a B. Or it could be a B event, then an A event, then a B event. Or it could be, so it's this and this, this and this, and this, I should say. Or it could be a B and B and A. What's the probability of A happening? 3 out of 10. What's the probab probability of B happening? Well, there's five odds. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. 5 out of 10 times 5 out of 10. Or plus 5 out of 10 times 3 out of 10 times 5 out of 10. Or plus 5 out of 10 times 5 out of 10 times 3 out of 10. You might notice that all of these things are equal. So we could just go 3 times 3 times 5 times 5 on 10 on 10 on 10. And I'm going to leave that to you with your calculator to go ahead and might want to come up with that as a fraction. It would be a nice decimal as well because the denominator is going to be thousands. We could darn near do it in our head. Okay, and the chart ones I think we're realizing, these ones aren't too bad. Approximately 11.46 million unemployed workers in the U.S. Now, they don't give us the exact number. When you have a massive number like that, you don't have to worry about accounting for it. Let's say if I'm going to draw, I drew three, peop three people, what's the probability that they're 39? I don't have to say, or excuse me, that they're between 25 and 44. I don't have to say that's 39% because I drew one of them out, it changed the percentage. Not when we're talking about 11 point, approximately 11.46 million. If we were talking about eight people making this chart, then that would be a whole different story. But we've got millions of people here, so th these percentages are going to hold. Estimate the number of unemployed workers in the 16 to 19 age group. Well, uh, not even a probability question. 16 to 19, 12%.12 of times the population, 11.46 million point one two times eleven point four six million we end up with approximately one point three seven five two million and you could write that as millions I'm not certain what the back of the book does um, for some reason I don't have B and E in here. Maybe that was a good decision. I think I think that was intentional. What's the probability that a person selected? So we're going for probabilities now. 
at random from the population of unemployed workers is, is in the 25 to 44 group. What's the probability that a person selected at random from the population of unemployed workers is in the 25 to 44? Well, that's all right here. So it's 39% or, as a probability, 0.39. Now that's it. What's the probability that a person selected at random from the population is 45 or older? 45 or older would include, we'd win if we were here, or we'd win if we were there, plus 3%, 32% as a probability, 0.32. Okay. And now some good ones. The deck for a card game, we have 108 cards, 25 each of red, yellow, blue, green, and eight are wild. Um, I believe what we're talking about here is the original Uno before there became like steroids Uno where there were way more wild cards and way more crazy things could happen. Each player is randomly dealt seven card hand. What's the probability a hand will contain exactly two wild cards? So for problem A, I don't care about blue, red, yellow, green. I just care about wild cards and non-wild cards. We have 108 cards. Of those, eight are wild and 100 must be non-wild. And now what we have to decide here is, hey, we're, we're selecting seven cards. Does the order that I receive those cards in have any bearing on what's what my hand is? Because pretty much every card game I'm aware of, once you're dealt the cards, if you pick them up, you can reorder those. I guess war, you can't do that. In the game of war, you can't reorder them. But, but games where you have hands, you're holding them in your hands, you can reorder the cards. So the order doesn't matter. So I want to know what's the probability of seven. Well, the denominator is a breeze here. What's really truthfully going to happen is we're going to choose seven out of 108. So 109. We're going to choose seven cards. It's going to be 108C7. But in the numerator, we're not choosing that. In the numerator, we have to make certain that we choose two of these. We want two of the eight to be wild. So that's 8C2 times, we need, then we're going to need five of these. Five, or excuse me, 100, sorry, 100C5. And I'm actually going to go through that once, but I might leave some of that, because that's, that's truthfully our answer. But I might leave some of this for, the, for you with your calculator. So we've got... 8, C5, we've talked about, or 8, C2, we've talked about how we find that, that well, how we do that on our calculator on previous videos. We've got 100, C7, C5, that's, the, that's in the numerator, excuse me, and then we need to divide that by 108, C7, and it better be a number between 0 and 1, and that is 0 0.0756, roughly 0 0.0756 or 0 0.076, okay? This is a classic case of what's referred to as combinatorics. Take a look here at the structure of this. 8 plus 100 is 108, 2 plus 5 is 7. You can see that structure a lot of different real world problems. Let's take a look at B. Two wild cards, two red cards, three blue cards. That's what we want to have dealt. Well, what's actually going to be dealt to us? They're actually going to deal seven out of 108. But I want two wild cards, and we talked about that. That's 8C2. And I want two of the red cards. How many red cards are there? 25. Two, I want 25C2 red cards. Three of the blue cards, how many blue cards are there? 25, so 25C3. And then we would enter that in calculator. But take a look. 8 and 25 and 25 don't add up to 108. Well, you could sort of think of this as times, hey, there's 50 other cards we didn't reference up here. 
50C0. That does not have to be there, but 8 and 25 and 25 and 50 gives me 108. 2 and 2 and 3 and 0 gives me 7. So you wouldn't really have to include that because that's just equal to 1. So dot, 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 you can calculate that one. Two integers from 1 through 40 are chosen by a random number generator. What's the probability the numbers are both even? Well, the probability the first one from 1 to 40 is even is 20 on 40 times 20 on 40, or 1 on 2 times 1 on 2, 1 fourth. B, one number is even, one number is odd. Now, here's, the, here's what's happening here. I needed to have even and even. Well, what if I would have, if I reverse those, it's still even and even. It's still the same event. But take a look at this. B, even and odd. Or odd and even. There's two ways we can do that. Um, so the probability even is 1 half times 1 half. Or plus the probability of odd even. Odd, odd even versus even odd is one half, one half. That's one fourth plus one fourth, one half. It's kind of like you had a boy or a, a probability of two boys would be one half times one half if you had children. Boy and a girl, if we just did one half times one half, we'd get one fourth. And boy and boy would be one fourth, and girl and girl would be one fourth, and that only adds up to three fourths. That's because there's two different ways we could have a boy and a girl, boy and girl or girl and boy. And C, both numbers are less than 30, so that would be 29 on 40 times 29 on 40. And D, the same number is chosen first. Okay, I'm playing the game. Whatever number comes up first, I'm still good. I'm still in the game. So I'm in the game after the first number, 40 out of 40. I can take any one of them. But the next number has to match the first number. And it will only do that 1 40th of the time. So we just get 1 40th. And let's see how this goes. Can I do this justice? I've got about four minutes. Let's see how it goes. All right. A space vehicle has an independent backup system for one of its communications systems. The probability that either system will function satisfactorily is 0.985. What's the probability of flight? A, both work. 0.985 times 0.985. The first one works, the second one works. B, at least one works. I'm going to come back to B. C, here's what I'm most concerned about. Both fail. Well, they would both fail 0.015 times 0.015. We see where that comes from. That's what's, if at 985, 0.985 is success, 0.015 is failure. And now, at least one system works satisfactorily. That means they both work, or the first one works, second one doesn't, or first one doesn't, second one does. A couple of ors in there. How else can we do this? So we win if one works satisfactorily, and that's the true story of this space flight. One of them better work. How do we lose if they both fail? So this could be the one minus probability of fail that we lose 0 0.015 times 0 0.015, dot, dot, dot. And this is a good one. Assume that the probability of the birth of a child is 50%, one half. In a family with four children, what's the probability A? We have all four boys, one half times one half times one half times one half, one sixteenth. In B, all the children are the same sex. Well, that would be boy, 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 or girl, 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 which is one half times one half times one half times one half plus one half times one half times one half times one half, which of course is one sixteenth plus one sixteenth, two sixteenths, one eighth. And C, this is this is where I get to get to be politically incorrect. Um, you win if there's at least one boy. Holy smokes. Well, we win if we get a, have a boy, a girl, a girl, a girl, a girl, a boy, a girl, a girl, a girl, a girl, a boy, a girl, a girl, a girl, a girl, a boy, a boy, a boy, a girl, a girl, a boy, a girl, a boy, a girl, a boy, a girl, a girl, a boy. I mean, see, there's, and th th I haven't even started to almost scratch the surface of this. So we're going to consider how about one minus the probability we lose. Well, what would be a loss in this case? We win if there's at least one boy. 
I feel guilty saying this, but how do we lose then? One minus the probability we have all girls. What a sexist problem this is. So it's one minus, what's the probability we have all girls? Same as the probability we have all boys. One sixteenth. It's one half times one half times one half times one half or sixteen sixteenths minus one sixteenth five sixteenths and I made it with about five seconds to spare it looks like. Um, here's your assignment and I got class rolling in right now. Let me know what I can help with. <laughs>